Hello and welcome to Crucible of Words for more dedicated legacy action. For today's midweek meta deck, we are playing Death From Above's Sneak and Show deck. This deck is exactly what you'd expect. We're using Show and Tell and Sneak Attack to put in some giant monsters. We've also got an Omniscience we can put in with the Show and Tell so we can hard cast our giant monsters as well. And that's pretty much it. The monsters in question, we got three Emeracles, one Grizzlebrand, and then four Atraxa. These dig us quite deep, and they also get our Force of Wills running and doing that sort of jam too. As for finding our combo, we've got eight cantrips between Brainstorm and Ponder. We've got a couple of One Rings, which we can use to give ourselves protection and dig into the right pieces. We've got some Fast Manor and Lotus Petal to help power this all out alongside our Ancient Tombs and City of Traitors. And then to protect us, we have four Force of Will, two Veil of Summers, and two Vexing Baubles. Vexing Bauble stops all the free counter magic, which does stop our own force of will, but we get to choose when we have and use this. So this is a nice low investment tool that we can always cycle as well. And that's basically it. We've got two islands and a mountain in the main deck, two tropical islands for our Veil of Summers, and some cyborg stuff. This also allows us to cast Beseju, or sorry, to channel Beseju. And then we have the Thundering Falls for a little bit of extra selection. Cyborg wise, we've got Megs of the Moon to try and shut down some decks like Eldrazi, along with this Consigned to Memory. We've got some Greyward Hate between Graftigger's Cage and Freya Macabre. We've got some Artifact Hate with the Braid and Brotherhood's End. Brotherhood Ends can also double up and sweep a load of things out like Ocelot Pride, Guide of Souls style decks. We've got some Carpet Flowers just to give us a little bit of a mana boost. And we've got some Pyroblast to make sure that we can get through some counter magic or destroy a Psychic Frog that's going to run away with the game. That's pretty much it. So this one a challenge. Let's see how it does in our hands. Remember to like and subscribe. And if you want to watch my videos early, you can become a YouTube member that gets to do that for just one pound a month. All right, let's sneak and show some giant monsters in. Well, our first hand has a lot of stuff, but we don't have the mana that we require. Well, now we could try and keep this, but we don't have cantrips to get there. We don't have anything but like a thundering falls. We are on the draw, but I don't think that's worth it. I think we can just get something a little bit more stable with our mana here. So this hand is definitely worse in a lot of ways, but we have two cantrips to start, try and smooth things out. I think this is okay. I'll keep this, and it's probably just an ancient tomb that goes here. Like if we kept that first hand and we just drew lands, that would obviously be great, but we had no way to guarantee the land drops. So if we're just trying to cast a four drop, I don't think that's a worthwhile way of doing things. Nether Goy from our opponent, this suggests a sort of blue-black sort of tempo-y style deck list. Okay, I think we're just going to go and get a basic island to begin with and start our pondering. Uh, show and tell. Okay, so these are all the things we want. So how much do I worry about discard? I guess we put the ponder. We're going to wait a turn anyway. Mm -hmm. All right, we can always protect with a brainstorm next turn. I don't believe our opponent's going to be doing much in the way of hand disruption. They probably have like two thought seizers. So if we get to untap and play this tropical island. Then we can try and jam the show and tell omniscience with Emrakul. If we put these the other way, we shuffle away the show and tell if they thought he doesn't take the Emrakul. But it would probably take the omniscience in that position. I don't know. We'll see. Our opponent hasn't played a second land yet. They might just be playing in the second main phase, or they might not have another land, so they've just got a handful of answers. All right, so there's a wasteland. What a massive lover of that one. What does that mean we're supposed to do here? We could just jam straight up. Or we could hang out this tropical island, which will then just get immediately wastelanded. So this plays into days. It's a tough call. Which land are we surrendering to the wasteland gods? Kind of wish we kept that second ancient tomb now. That would have been really handy here. But we didn't know that was what was going to happen. We only have two drops in the deck. This takes us a long way away if we lose our ancient tomb. If we draw the Emrakul. I'll play this tropical island. I'm just going to snap off this wasteland. I hope not, but they did not. They can do it in their turn, but it depends what they're worried about us having. Another Wasteland. If we get to our turn without them Wastelanding us, that a bit of a boon for Please don't Wasteland us. Can we get to our main phase without our opponent Wastelanding us? We cannot. Um, I think this means we're casting a Brainstorm. I'm reluctant to cast it off of this Tropical Island, purely because if our opponent has a Bowmasters, that goes very wrong for us. Can we Brainstorm first here? So we wait for this to target us, and then we put the Veil of Summer on. So this is the exact sequence that we suggested might happen. So Bowmasters can ping the Nethergoyf, and then can start pinging the token itself. So they are going to get a large creature. We don't need all of these things. So we'll put them... We're about to draw for turn as well, which is less good. Don't really want this Emrakul. I don't really want this Brainstorm. But we're going to draw them both, aren't we? Or we're going to... 
draw one and surveil the other away. I don't really want them to know that we've got an Emrakul. But is that the correct one to put back here? I think it probably is. And we keep the brainstorm's so bad as well though. Right, we'll get rid of the we'll draw the brainstorm and get rid of the Emrakul. Next time we try and do it around a days. If our opponent doesn't waste hand us, if they do, then that sucks for us and we probably just have to go for it there and then. Okay, opponent. We probably lose the Thundering Falls. So we're kind of cold to days. I don't think we get any chance to do any more surveilling here because any more cantripping because our opponent's got quite a scary bunch of stuff over there. So we're probably on play Ancient Tomb, show and tell. Hope we can put in the Omniscience Emrakul and win the game. Now our opponent's getting to Sculpt nicely here. This is their second brainstorm of the game. So they're going to have a decent amount of action that they actually want here. And if they waste hand us, we are cold to all of their action. Ugh, Thoughtseize is bad too. The jig's already up in terms of what we're playing. So they're going to take the show and tell. They're going to waste hand our Thundering Falls. And we are in the dirt. So how much is this? Eight damage. So they have us dead on their next turn. So we need to top deck the show and tell here. And our opponent to not have anything. Yep, so there's the wasteland. We don't get to do any cantripping here. We can fire off a brainstorm. Okay, a lotus petal. So that means we are looking at pondering here. Because that sees the most cards. Well, that's the one we wanted. Yep, you get to ping us again, but you're going to lose your whole board very shortly. Or you're going to win the game. That's that's the realm we're living in. I do not believe this is going to resolve. But if it does, we probably win the game. Them's be the margins. Look at that, our opponent has a counter spell. Who'd have thought? All right, let's go to the sideboard. What do we have for a matchup like this? So we have some Pyroblast that can hit some of their stuff, but it's not great. The Carpet of Flowers, on the other hand, is very much where we want to be here. The Megs of the Moon has text. Is it enough text I'm interested in? Unsure. Pyroblast as just another way of forcing our things through is something I'm interested in. What goes to bring in these carpets? I want to have a critical density of our things that allow us to win the game. I think we're probably looking at trimming just cantrips. And I don't know if I want the Pyroblast because their threats, they're going to have Psychic Frog. But a lot of their threats are things like Bowmaster, which is a problem for us. If we're trying to cantrip and they've also got the nether goif which doesn't affect it will impact a tamio but hopefully we just ignore the tamio i like the one ring buying us time drawing cards it's very hard to lose once you've got the one ring up and running am i okay in just bringing in the carpets or do i want these pyroblasts as well it is tempting to have some pyroblasts but i don't want to reduce the density of our actual pieces trim on some cantrips here we want the fast manner as well because we want to be able to get out from underneath wastelands because we can't rely on having the carpet flowers. Uh, yeah, this isn't one I'm going to keep. We've got a lot of big creatures, but we don't really have the things to make it work. Uh, do I want to play the hope my opponent doesn't have wasteland lottery? That is... What can I, like, we have to draw a mana source. All the mana sources bar the soul lands will give us the show and tell on turn two with a vexing ball backup. That, that puts us cold to Wasteland in quite a big way. Do I want to be cold to Wasteland? I don't... Mana sources are the most abundant thing we can draw. Hmm. This does solve our, one of our problems. All right, I'm going to keep it. I certainly wouldn't fault someone for throwing this one back. Sometimes you've got to believe. Now, if they play a Wasteland game and they slow the game down a bit, then we've got turns to draw into mana sources anyway. Let's snap that Wasteland off here. Now, thinking about it, I imagine they have a choice between playing out a land and casting something like a Tamio or getting the Wasteland in. They didn't Wasteland us, so if we draw the right thing, they could Thought Seize us. Just a Necrogoyf. All right, so they just want to get some pressure in. So if we can draw the Mana Source, we can put the Emrakul in. Look at that. That's how we drew it up. Oh, no, no, we can't do that because of our own Bauble. Oh, no. Whoops. Yikes. Oh, no. It's not like we uh, had a different way to play around that. We, Because uh, that was our draw for turn. And now the Wasteland comes in. If we'd have drawn a land instead of that Lotus Petal, we would have won this game. And now we're probably going to lose it. Our opponent's got a little bit of pressure, but not huge amounts. Yikes. Brainstorm we can't cast. I do like this keep, though. Protection, turn two, show and tell, some of the time. And we had 12 cards to draw to that immediately won us the game there. Now we're going to be under the gun of Tamiyo. This is also going to grow their Nethergoifs. If we can find the land, we can win the game, but it's going to be difficult from this stage. 
apologies if you can hear any noise. Someone in, is doing some yard work next door. All right, this is one of the pieces we require. Thought sees. I'm going to brainstorm in response here. I'm going to get a basic island. Uh, these don't really help us a great deal. We have to draw through this. Is there a way that we can make them hit our Emrakul? If we keep show and tell, show and tell, Emrakul, they might take the Emrakul and shuffle, but then we don't have the Emrakul to put in. Uh, so this is going to be a sorcery. So these are coming in for three, so we'll be dead in the next turn. I think we're just dead there. Like playing the Lotus Pearl out there is obviously a mistake. It doesn't matter in the course of things, but maybe that keep was a little bit sketchy, but we had 12 draws to just immediately win the game. Tricky one. Let's go to round two. We have an Island Ponderer. It is a little bit of a sketchy island in the Tropical Island. I think this is reasonable. So we get our Tropical Island down and cast a Ponder, I believe. We've got an emergency brainstorming for our... Ugh. I don't really want to go through these. We're looking for a little bit more mana and some show and tells. So I'm going to go any order and shuffle. All right, that's a bit more mana. Hopefully we don't lose our Tropical Island. Ponder off of a Volcanic Island. So we could be looking at Mirror. We could be looking at some sort of Grixis or Blue Red Tempo deck. Those are the most common things with a Volcanic Island in. Sneak Attack. Okay, I don't hate it. I think we're going to start off with a Brainstorm. All right, so the plan is now looking like we're going to sneak attack in our Atraxa. And we're probably putting... We could put the Besaju away, or we could play the Besaju now and have a Veil of Summer. The Omniscience can go with our Force of Will. So we're probably just playing lands for the next couple of turns. One, two, three, four. We don't really want to play sneak attack until we can activate it. And we're just going to put land land on top here and play this Besaju so that we're covered from any discard spells with this Veil of Summer. We've also got Force of Will we can use. So we're relatively safe. Running Wastelands will be a pain. No Wasteland. We can play our Scalding Tarn. The plan is Sneak Attack with Veil of Summer and Force of Will. A commercial district. All right, so we're definitely on a rug deck. I don't think you can afford to run Surveil Lands like that in a deck with more colours in. You probably need to have your triomes and things. I'm not going to get a Thundering Falls here. I'm just going to go to my turn. I could just drop this island and then we can play around. A f we can do this around uh, days. Do I think our opponent's running days? They haven't played anything. They're running they haven't played anything aggressive. They're running Commercial District. Alright, let's crack this and see if we're getting stifled first. We're not getting stifled. I would like a basic mountain here. I don't want to be waste sanded off my red source for sneak attack. One, two, three... Four. Are we in? A force of will. Pitching one with the multiverse. All right, I would like to veil us some of that one, please. One with the multiverse is like bad omniscience. It's still good, obviously. All right, so we're in here. Next turn we can sneak attack and an Atraxa and hopefully find a red source and an Emrakul and just put the game to bed. So our opponent's got a turn to do some stuff. A Thundering Falls. So show and tell is going to be a bit sketchy in this matchup. I would like this Lotus Petal in play. I would like to activate Sneak Attack. I would like to put in an Atraxa. And let's have a look at the top 10 cards of our library. There is an Emrakul the Aeon's Torn. And we'll get some lands. Yeah, our opponent's going to scoop because they've seen the Emrakul there. And they know we're just going to destroy their permanence and reduce their life total to minus something. Okay, so we've seen enough cards to know that our opponent is running their own sort of show and tell type stuff. That means we probably want some Pyroblasts here. Their mana base looked like it's more susceptible to Megas of the Moon than ours. So I'm curious about this. And we might be able to get some joy with the Carpet of Flowers. What are we supposed to be boarding out here? I'm not big into the show and tell. But sometimes we will show and tell into our Omniscience Emrakul. And that is fine. We can maybe trim one copy of show and tell. Because we can't cast show and tell unless we have the Omniscience. I don't mind going lower on that one. Unless we've got loads of mana and can like show in a sneak and just go go hand with it that way. I'm even tempted to trim another one of these and just try and play the sneak attack game. I think that is reasonable enough. What would that give us? That would probably give us two pyroblasts. So if we want Magus of the Moon and Carpet of Flowers, how are we fitting those in? We probably need the Veils so we can force through our stuff. And same for the Vexing Baubles. Vexing Bauble also good against our opponent's Omniscience if they have one. What to trim here becomes very difficult. And we want to be able to ponder and preordain to our stuff. This is really difficult work. I think like the 
The one ring is a really good way to just get enough cards that we can ignore what our opponent's doing as well. I would look at trimming some cantrips again just for some mana. How useful is the carpet? Maybe the carpet isn't that useful. And we can just trim down a couple of like ponders into maguses. Magi, maguses, one of the two. Um, the veil to force stuff through is nice. The omniscience is something. So if our opponent's show and tells, we at least get an omniscience. We have a brainstorm to do some digging. We have enough mana to put a sneak attack into play. I think I'm going to take it. I'm not a big fan of it, but I think it's okay. My opponent's going to be very cautious about when they do their thing. There is a ponder from our opponent. There's going to be a lot of sitting there looking at each other until we're ready to go. They did not shuffle off the ponder. All right, so we found a sneak attack. That's not nothing. I will deploy this island for the purposes of brainstorming in case we have any emergencies. An ancient tomb. Opponent does not want to show and tell. Understandable. And a tracks. So now we've got something we're working towards. I think I want to cast a brainstorm here, and then we know whether we want the veil or the omniscient, uh, the veil or holding up a red source for a potential pyroblast. Hole breacher. Well, that's a disaster, isn't it? Wasn't expecting that at all. That's a pretty good pivot. The two of these cards got to go on top of our library. We're going to draw them all in good order anyway. Alright, so we know our opponent's pivot for the matchup is to play a more fair, stompy style shell. They might have sneak attacks, but if they're playing one with the multiverse, they might just be a full-on Omnitel build. You generally don't want to go into that unless you've got enough omnisciences to rely on in the first place. The one ring. Yep, that's a good one. Yeah, that whole breach here. A little bit rude. A lot of ways this is more egregious than Bowmasters. Bowmasters obviously better card because it's lower mana value, does a few other things. But with Bowmasters, you can at least make the choice to draw your cards, which is quite a cool design space. Whereas this is just like, nope, you don't get to do the thing you want to do. So next turn, we can play Sneak Attack, but that's probably not good enough. We need to draw a couple more turns of stuff. We need to get that. We need to get our Mountain in play and our City of Traitors so that we can Veil us our way through. It's going to be very difficult to do in the face of this One Ring. I think we're probably just going to eat it pretty hard from this whole breach moving forward. Our opponent has a sneak attack. Are we just proper dead cell here? Not yet. But with this one ring ticking up, it seems very unlikely that they're going to not have any creatures to put in. This is a trace. We have our own sneak attack. That's not really the most useful thing in the world, is it? We just kind of got to... Like, maybe we go for it this turn and hope the attractor works next turn. I just, I just don't think there's any realistic way of winning this game. Like maybe our opponent has nothing, but they didn't have any creatures. They almost certainly have counter magic. Because if they had a creature, they would have put it last turn in off of a treasure. So I think it's right to play around the counter magic there rather than jamming into it. We're more likely to fade a creature because they clearly didn't have a creature. All right, let's see what they are going to reveal. We get to see a lot of their deck here. Uh, another Attraxer. They can fire off another Attraxer and then try and get an Emrakul. But we get to see a lot more of their deck and how they sideboarded. They are a lot more blue than I necessarily thought after seeing the commercial district. That's an odd one to have as your ETB tapped land. Right, there's a couple of flowers. Just put in another attractor and show me. Or are they just going to do it for a little bit and then do it next turn or whatever? So a lotus petal would be good here. Our opponent can probably hard cast some tracks at this point, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, they could have hard cast an attractor. Just have it hanging around. It's weird to do that brainstorm now instead of when they could have snuck attacked something in. Just some slightly odd lines there, in my opinion. Now, obviously, we don't know what's in our opponent's hand. But we are dead next turn, so we need to draw a Lotus Petal here. And they just discard in the Emrakul. So they could have killed us last turn. They chose not to. Uh, so now we need to brainstorm into a show-and-tell Omniscience line. Oh, no, we don't, because we can't brainstorm because they have a whole breacher. What am I talking about? Yeah, we're just dead there. All right, don't want to do anything differently. Um, I think the carpets are better than I originally gave them credit for. A couple of carpets. They're basically just Lotus Petals, but better. Uh, I'm less on the Magus of the Moon now. I just have these ponders back in. Do I want a Braids just to kill their little hole breacher guy? I don't think so. I think we just have to keep our eyes peeled and look at how we're going to navigate it if they've got the card up. Carpet of Flowers is a really good card in this matchup. 
Is it good enough to keep a hand that looks like this though? We need to find a monster. We've got a load of cantrips to help find monsters and the monsters themselves. We do have to use our Beseju on this carpet of flowers. Sneak attack is the win condition we want as well. All right, I've convinced myself into this one. We're going to have to draw some monsters or cantrips, but yeah, it's a bit of an ugly hand, I won't lie. All right, carpet of flowers is in. So this might make our opponent be more reluctant to play our islands, but likely they're still going to want to ponder and things. All right, so that's probably going to be a surveil land at our end step. Right, so we found the thing we wanted here in a creature to cheat in. Now we just need a blue card to force so we can get our sneak attack in underneath our opponent's stuff. I'm going to get an island here. They are. So that's plus one mana for us. That means we can sneak attack and attract a provided we draw a blue card. Because I'm not going to play a sneak attack without having cover for it. There's another Misty. A Lotus Petal. I don't think that's the one we want here. Like I said, I'm not going to just jam this sneak attack when our opponent has access to counter magic and stuff. We need some way of covering. Whether that's going to be a Vexing Bauble, a Veil of Summer, or just a blue card for our Force of Will. I at least want something. All right, so they got a bit of Surveil action. They didn't want fancy a Brainstorm. Maybe they're going to be thinking about our own Hull Breacher. We don't have one, but they don't know that, and they've got one, so it's probably on their mind a bit more. Let's give them the old business. Let's tap this, make it look like a Hull Breacher. Let's give him the fear. <laughs> now they're going to be thinking, what is over there? Is it intuition or whatever? I didn't care about his carpet. It does give them more mana. But there's only so much we can do about that. Are they going to use it this turn or not? Two red mana. Ancient tomb. So this is going to be a hard cast sneak attack. So now we're very much in the we should be going phase of the game. So let's play out our city. Oh, we're just in, aren't we? Come on, Atraxa. Show us. Big Emrakul. Okay, so I would like an Atraxa here. I would like a Force of Will. Actually, no, we want the Ponder and the Pyroblast here. And we'll take the One Ring and we'll take uh, a land that can fetch a red source. And I'll play this Lotus Petal. And I will sneak attack in another Atraxa. In the Emrakul, we just get to win the game here. Doesn't matter which one we keep. The ability still goes on the stack. Uh... Not an Emrakul, we found a Grizzle Brand. That's pretty good. I would like a Grizzle Brand. I will take an instant, a sorcery, an artifact, a land. And then we've got loads of life, so we can sneak in the Grizzle Brand and draw it to an Emrakul and Lotus Petal here. Still looking for that Lotus Petal. Is there really no Lotus Petal there? That is a bit of an annoying one, isn't it? We don't have a way of gaining any life immediately. Swing for a bunch. Our opponent's on two, but they get to sneak attack in some, like, spooky emrakul type stuff. Do we have enough permanence to survive that? One, two, three, four, five, six. We do. So it's just an emrakul, we're fine. Interesting. We can't play the lands, so we played land already. Guess we get a clean up. Goodbye, all of our creatures. So now we have to go clean up. And there's a lot of cards we've got to get rid of. So we'll get rid of one ring, we'll get rid of a land, we'll get rid of another land... We'll keep the Vexing Bauble just in case our opponent plays a One Ring that we need to deal... Uh, sorry, not One Ring, an Omniscience. We don't really need any cantrips anymore. We do need blue cards. Don't need a sneak attack. We're going to keep all of our forces that we can. I guess the Pyroblast isn't very useful right now. Still got more to get rid of here. Force of Will, Force of Will, Force of Will. So we have three Force of Wills. We have two Ponders. We don't need all of these things. We can probably just get rid of this. Oh, there's a land there that we can get rid of as well. I want to keep one land in hand. So what does that mean our hand looks like? It's probably Emrakul, Vexing Bauble, Force of Will, Force of Will, Force of Will. Let's get rid of Ponders. We'll shuffle those in. So we need our opponent to not have lethal this turn. They can't show and tell Omniscience because of our Vexing Bauble. We can survive an Emrakul hit. We can't survive a tractor into Emrakul. There is no Emrakul there. They do have a Disruptor Flute. Which is awkward, but we can counterspell that. They got a bunch of stuff. That's what they're telling me. They got an Emrakul. It's a couple of flowers. That's fine. Our counterspells are hard counters. What are you putting in this time? Is it an Emrakul? Okay. So this is lethal damage and we can't beat that. Yeah, we were very unlucky on our flips with the Emrakul. Like we had... We looked at... What? 10? 20... 34 cards, and we couldn't find 
a Lotus Petal and Emrakul. We can only find one of them. That's a bit unfortunate. All right, let's go to round three. All right, we can probably win the game on turn two if we don't have to worry about what our opponent's doing. We can just show and tell in an Omniscience, cast a Traxxer, find some good stuff, keep going. Can we get through Counter Magic, though? Or Hand Disruption? We've got a Brainstorm, which can maybe save us from some Hand Disruption. It'll slow us down a touch. It's one of those things where I kind of want to put three cards on top if I cast a Brainstorm. Which you're not allowed to do. Do I play this Scalding Tarn and expose myself to Stifles and things like that? This also gets us Surveil, which could hit a Force of Will, which might be a useful thing to have. We still Emergency Brainstorm, just gives us the most options. And there's not that many Stifles around these days. People are running consigned to memory over Stifle, even in Stifle, not a time to be alive. Dragon's Rage Channeler. Okay, so we need to play around permission of varying dis disguises. Uh, I think I'm okay to get the Thundering Fall to an Emrakul. Um, like, it's a good thing to cast the Omniscience, but that's not really what we're looking for. I think we put it into the graveyard. Our opponent's going to know what we're doing now, but we have the stuff to win the game in hand. It's to make sure that it sticks is the thing. A Ponder. So we can cast a Brainstorm. We're not just running it straight out into Days and Force of Will. We're at least going to have an attempt. Uh, okay, we don't need... I think the City of Trade is going to be better than the Ancient Tomb a lot of the time here. So I'm going to get rid of these two. Crack this. I kind of want to get a Trop here. In case we find what we need in terms of a Veil. Okay, this works in a different fashion. We can just do it twice. We could have put the Emrakul in our hand instead, but then if they take the Emrakul and they shuffle away, they're not going to take the Emrakul when we have this. I don't believe we're getting Thought Seized, but it's certainly a possibility that we need to respect, that we didn't really fully respect here. Like they can't take both of our show and tells, so they just take away one of these, but then we get to show and tell the other thing in. But our plan is now to cast a show and tell around days, unless our opponent finds a waste sound, then we might have to cast it into a days, which is less ideal. All right, again, we do a fail push. Not a surprise. So we see that they are now Grixis as well, which was my general expectation considering how popular Grixis is. And I'll leave up the uh, Veil of Summer, make them think about it. I'm not expecting this to resolve. I'm expecting the second one to resolve. Right. We're just throwing the green mana there, make them think about it. So the way we, this goes wrong for us is our opponent has another hard counter spell, or they have access to a Thought Seize. Uh, we get to play around days next turn as well, unless they wasteland our City of Trades. That's but they're more likely to wasteland our Trop or Thundering Falls, I would imagine. Taking us off a of Colour is probably better than taking us off a of Raw Mana. Obviously, you know, we know that's not necessarily the case. But from the perspective of our opponent, that might be the case. Although if they've got a Daze, they might be more interested in getting rid of the City of Traitors. We'll get information about if they get a Wasteland and how they use it. Right, they managed to make their Dragon's Rage Channel Delirious. There's an Underground Sea. We're going to see a little attack for three. Prone's got some mana up there. I want to play around double days, probably. If they got a second force, then we probably lose this game. There's not really much we can do about this. They do have a second force. That's pretty bad news. They had a days as well. Yep, sometimes you just get delved, right? Feels a hard ask playing this deck at the moment, which makes the challenge win all the more impressive to me. Well, our deck's going to be very good into things like Eldrazi. That's where we want to be finding. But all these like tempo decks where they've got all these like counter magic and threats so they're constantly beating us down yeah like look at this what are we supposed to do they're just going to have so much card advantage going forward from this frog sneak attack you say do you want to play around our opponent having day i don't think we have that choice i think we are just slamming the sneak attack and hoping to untap with it they did not have a daze all right so they got one turn and then we kill them in theory they could wasteland so we only get one creature in but that one creature will destroy all their permanents it's a good number of permanents to destroy. And pump in the frog. So this is 10 damage, right? 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this puts us to 1, which is, importantly, not 0. They could Lightning Bolt us, but Lightning Bolt is very much out of favour at the moment because it doesn't kill Psychic Frog. Tamiyo. All right. So we should be A-OK -okay here. We managed to get there. Put in this Attraxa. One ring, we're getting Emrakul, and Highland. It doesn't really matter what we get here. Our opponent's going to scoop, because what happens is we put in the other creature. 
We attack. They have to lose six permanents. And because of the amount of damage coming, the only permanent they get to keep is Tamiya, which then goes under the bus. So opponent ends up with no permanents and no cards in hand. So they can't even draw a lightning bolt or something. All right. We've got game one. That was nice. This is very much the carpet flowers matchup. 100%. It's probably the Pyroblast matchup too. And now we're in that horrible situation. We're trying to work out what I'm supposed to board in and out because I'm struggling a little bit on this sometimes. I like show and tell on this instance. Maybe the one ring is not where I want to be. It is a four mana spell against the day's wasteland deck. But we're trying to cast big spells. Is it better to make sure our first spell resolves? Probably. We're definitely not trimming any of these attracts. I don't, are we trimming Omniscience? That seems a bit loose. Uh, I'm less into the Grizzle brand. I think we need this critical density of creatures to put in if we're doing sneak attack things. Maybe we're trimming on a sneak attack. Seems like a pretty wild idea. Mm, no, I think we just do need our win conditions here. We do kind of need this force of will to get our things through. Maybe I want these one rings instead of ponders. Is that true? That seems a bit wild. All right, we'll, we'll give it a go at like this. Because there's an idea of just trying to overload your opponent's counters by having lots of haymakers. But the problem is you need to get to those haymakers, so it becomes really awkward. This hand does do the things we need it to eventually. And I'll take that. Tamiyo is a very good turn one play here. I think we just have to let it go. Our plan is to strip all their permanents and then cool down the line. I want to get a ponder off here before our opponent has access to Bowmasters. Uh, and this has to be in any order shuffle, I think. Show and tell. So we could show and tell an omniscience with counter magic, potentially, if we find a blue card. We will need some land to do that, but we've got Thundering Falls to get that way. We need to make sure we're not getting wastelanded into the dirt. Not that we can actually change that. If our opponent's got them, they've got them. All right, here comes a Tamiyo. All right, a Brainstorm as well. Pretty good turn from our opponent. But if we show and tell omniscience and cast Emrakul, we win the game. Emrakul can't be counted to even if our opponent's got something wild like a vexing bauble for some reason. Then we don't care about that. I don't believe our opponent's going to have anything like that. Never go. Okay, we're on Thundering Falls. We're looking for ideally a soul land. I'll take any land at this point though. I don't know if we're going to have the time to play around days. Because this Tamiyo, when it pops, is game over. Because they're going to have all the permission available. And we can't beat through that. So it goes up to six this turn. And then it goes up to eight. So we maybe have one more turn. We want to take another draw. But if we get a wasteland pointed at us, then that's obviously a huge issue. There's a wasteland. Welcome to huge issue town. Goodbye, Thundering Falls. Maybe we should be playing Megs of the Moon here to shut off days. And a bunch of other things. Right. So we've got one turn to hit a land. We don't have any more surveil lands, so this is it. One mana planeswalkers. Pretty good. They didn't play a wasteland, so there's a chance. Best draw would be a soul land, because then we get to play around days as well. Come on, deck. Come on, I believe in you. I shouldn't have believed. Uh, we're not beating the Tamiyo ultimate. We'll see if our opponent does it. I don't know why they wouldn't. I'm going to clue here. Just get rid of one of these attractors. If our opponent cracks the Tamiyo, will definitely scoop up. Yep, there it is. We're not being that. Sure. Then one drop wins the game on turn five. Maybe I do want these Megas of the Moons. That does make some of these other things worse, though, like Carpet and Veil become a lot worse. We can stop them having days and a bunch of other things. No, I think we're just going to go in without how we, how we had it. We've got a decent amount of protection, but Wasteland is going to be bad news. We can at least kill a Frog or a Tamiyo. All right, I'm going to keep this one. Prince Mull to six. We do have this awkward spot of whether or not we want to play out this bauble for our own force of will. I think we're going to go Beseju Vexing Bauble here. All right, we got two cards out of it. I'll take a one mana into Turek, please. We also got Tamiyo, which hopefully means they don't have a second one. Or well, maybe it does mean they have a second one. All right, just DRC. That's one that we don't get to kill with Pyroblast. So this gets us a Thundering Falls. We need to find another red source if we want to actually have Pyroblast back to support our sneak attack. But sneak attack on its own isn't going to do anything. We will need a creature for it soon. Oh, they had a Mistress Bauble. They must have drawn that this turn, otherwise we'd cast it last turn, right? Dragon's Rage Channeler coming in. And we're going to get a Thundering Falls. We have to get red source, so we may as well get one that gives us a little bit of selection on the way in this turn. Scalding Tarn. I do want another red source, so I will leave that on top. Another red source. We still don't have any monsters yet. Just one of those bridges we're going to have to cross at some point. So we can do 
sneak attack with Pyroblast next turn. Find a blue card, we can also Force of Will. Just need some monsters. Any monsters, good. Wasteland, not so good. Goodbye, Thundering Force. This now gives them a Delirious Channeler, so we're going to be taking more damage. A Vexing Bauble, you say. Well, they really hated the last one. So let's play another one. Another Wasteland. They can't take us off red. Take us off green, though. They can also hard cast a daze with the mana they're showing, which is certainly irritating for us. So that means we have to think about how we're playing this a little more. A Veil of Summer. I think we do play this City of Traitors. Not a big lover of it, but I think we have to do this. If they've got a third Wasteland, that's obviously a disaster for us, but this way we have the ability to play a sneak attack around a daze. Provided we draw the land. If we don't draw the land and we get wastelanded, then sure, that's bad news for us. Our opponent's clock is certainly ramping up over there, though. We've got three turns after this of our opponent hitting us. We will need to find a creature. All right, they're playing something. A Meltdown, you say. X equals one. I would like to draw a card from my Vexing Bauble, please. An Ancient Tomb. So now we can cast Sneak Attack with Veil of Summer up. Or we could just cast the first... We could just cast a Sneak Attack. Do I want to get a blue source or a red source? I think it's a mountain, so we can't get wastelanded off of sneak attack activations. Am I playing this around a daze or not? This two life doesn't make a difference to the clock. We have a daze being cast. We have one mana floating. We don't need to use our Veil of Summer on this. You want another one? No. Do I want to Veil of Summer here? I don't think so. I want to use this Veil of Summer to stop a Brazen Borrower taking this out of play. I think that's more where my head lies. If we get an opportunity, I will cycle this Veil of Summer at the end step, I think. Because I mean, our opponent plays a spell, so they can't play the Brazen Borrower. Petty Theft. We'll let him surveil, and then we'll cast this Veil of Summer. Another days. Sure. That's bad news. Playing Show and Tail decks into this sort of, like, blue-black X tempo style decks just feels horrible. Now our Ancient Tomb is causing us some issues. We can sneak attack something in, but it doesn't matter. We've got nothing. We're just dead. We've been through a load of hoops, but it doesn't really matter. Our opponents just got stuff they need. All right, let's go to round four. All right, for round four, we've got another one of those hands where we need some lands to really kick things off. Do I want to keep a one lander? We've been burned a few times. I think we just have to... Am uh, I going to be a bit disciplined there? Okay, we've got a lot of attractors. But those are cards to put back with Brainstorm. So we can put back one of them with a Brainstorm a couple of times time. Alright, we're looking against Eldrazi. This should be a matchup we're actually good at. Because we get to mostly ignore what they're doing and just play something that goes over the top without having to worry about counter magic. That's the theory, at least. When I used to play the old builds of Eldrazi back in the day, the matchup was horrific. It was so bad that people were playing Confusion in the ranks as a sideboard card for show and tell decks. Um, I don't mind having another Ponder. I don't mind having a Force of Will when we have a Spare Attractor. So I guess we go... Put the Force of Will into our hand now. Then we have the Ponder for next turn. Then we can do Ponder, Brainstorm, Shenanigans. Or Brainstorm, Ponder. All right, I have Ugin and no follow-up. Okay, so I think we want to Brainstorm first. This is not going to be a Vexing Ball matchup, is it? So get rid of one of those. This second attractor is our blue card for Force of Will. So we're probably getting rid of something like a Besage here. Play this, we crack this. We probably want to start getting red sources now. That does expose us a little bit to Wasteland, but that's going to be something we're exposed to at some point. Our opponent wants to Wasteland us and not play any threats. A city of Traitors. That is the sort of thing that gets us where we need to go. So I think we probably want this Force of Will for next turn. Let's take the city now. If our opponent's playing Wastescape Battle Mage, we don't want to play out the Sneak Attack. But if our opponent's playing Thought Knots here, we also don't want to play out... We, we kind of have to play out Sneak Attack. So it's kind of down if you do, down if you don't a little bit. So I think this is just play Sneak Attack and hope they don't have the Battle Mage because these decks run Thought Knots here a lot more than they run Wastegate Battle Mage. Oh wow, they're just scooping it up to a Sneak Attack. Interesting. Alright, let's get some Megs of the Moon up in there. Oh, they don't even want to play the match. Okay, that shows you a little bit how this matchup goes for the Show and Tell player, I think. Uh, that is a premature concession, obviously, because they can beat us down pretty hard still. But for the purposes of making some content, what would we be sideboarding out here? We'd probably be taking out these four. And we're looking at a couple of Magus. And we probably want all of these cards and these cards. Some selection of these seven cards. So what are we looking to trim away here? We don't have time to be messing around with Ponders and stuff. We just need spells that actually do stuff. 
So we're probably getting rid of these four and then maybe trimming some of these cantrip style things. Especially if there's going to be chalices in our future and just have some removal spells and just go. Something like that is what I would do. But that's four rounds. So we are currently two and two. No, we're one and three here. One and three. Not ideal. Let's see if we can get a second win. Just very confused by this one zero. Don't, don't see that very often. We do need another mana source. But this hand looks alright to me. We're on the draw, so we've got some additional cards coming our way. Alright, are we just getting reanimated on straight up? No. Okay. We're looking at most likely a Rescaminator or a Blueback Tempo style deck. Those are the most common underground sea things, but things like Doomsday are still popping up in the meta here and there. What are we doing with our turn? Okay, we just need a land. I'm going to keep this... Do I want to keep this petal in hand or not? I think I do want to keep it in hand. We've got a Veil of Summon that we're going to use to try and protect our hand from any Thought Seizers. But we can just show and tell, show and tell in theory. Our opponent could be a Storm deck. Okay, a Wasteland. We are just getting absolutely ruined by Wasteland. So splashing the extra green here has absolutely not been worth it for us this league. A show and tell. Play on one of our Lotus Petals so we don't have to discard it. Are you really going to daze this opponent? Yep, yeah, they are. All right, opponent. I don't feel in a great spot now. Now, we did keep a one lander. It had two mana sources. We only need one more mana source to go. And we've been hit by a wasteland. So we are... And we've had our other wasteland... Our other mana source counterspelled. So... And now they've got the Tamiyo, so they kill us in four turns. Yeah. I think when Psychic Frog gets the boot, people are then going to start looking at Tamiyo and thinking, maybe this card's too good. All right, let's play another bit of wasteland food, because that's how this match is going, or this whole league is going. They would like to get back a Brainstorm, so they're not just going to kill us in a few turns. That, they're more afraid of us than we are of them, I suppose. But we just have a range of show and tells to keep firing off here. We can ignore all of their counter magic, because we're just going to keep headbutting into it until it works. Don't stifle me, that would be really sad. Okay, so I think this one just gets us a basic island. So we're going to cast a show and tell, and our opponent's going to cast a Force of Will or a Daze. There it is. We go again next turn. If that doesn't work, we go again the turn after, and eventually we'll try and cast an Emrakul. If we can draw a mana source that fetches a trop, then we can go and get ourselves a little bit of extra defense. Or just having a land so we can pay around a daze is quite nice too. Six cards in our opponent's hand. They're a little bit behind on the Tamiyo track, because they took a turn off to get a Brainstorm. And Merktide. Sure. So now they have a real threat. Let's go again. Five cards in hand, opponent. This time it's a Force of Will. They do have Stifles, that's good to know. Not that we can do a great deal about it right now. All right, so our opponent's going to kill us in two swings, because we're going to be tapping this Ancient Tomb. They play an Underground Sea rather than a Wasteland. And then they return the card with a Tamiyo. Return Force of Will. Green source? Not a green source. Well, we're going to do the only thing we can do here. Because we're dead next turn. Cracking a clue, maybe they didn't have the blue card. Yep, just another tempo deck absolutely making us look, look like a clown. Yikes. Um, what are we supposed to do here? Nothing I've been doing has been helping in this matchup. If I'm being perfectly honest. So maybe we're supposed to try something different? Maybe we're supposed to ditch the forces? That seems very loose though. Um, maybe just trimming cantrips in favour of these things. Now we can't trim the RA plus Bs because otherwise we're not winning the game. Part of me is tempted to cut Brainstorm because of Orcish Bowmasters and the fact that we want to have one turn sculpting and then we go. Is that a ridiculous thing to do? I don't know, maybe it is, but let's try it. Because nothing else we've been doing against these tempo matchups has been working. Like we could, like I keep saying, we could bring in the Magus of the Moon. That is an option, but that does shut off our carpets and our veils, which are like two of the cards that are presumably in here to try and help with that matchup. How good is this carpet of flowers going to be? It could be huge. Oh. We do have double Lotus Petal. We could make a turn one sneak attack. I think we're better off having a turn one carpet most of the time though. Let's go for a carpet. If our opponent wants to force of will this, we will Pyroblast back. All right, we're just in with it. All right, I'll play my land out now. So if we find a land, we can sneak attack with Pyroblast backup. Well, we might settle into one of those games where we hit our opponent for 15 and then we just try to draw a creature off the top and we never do and our opponent wins. I've certainly played against show and tell and had that happen lots of times. Whereas if you Emrakul a little bit later and you take more of their board, it tends to be a lot more of a powerful effect. But we'll see what our opponent's up to here. A Tamiyo. 
I don't think we have to care about that yet. Golding Tarn. Yes, we'll have some red mana, I think. One. I think we got a bunch of red mana here. Uh, I think we still want this Volk, though. We've got Force of Will coming in. This also reduces the amount of cards our opponent has in their hand. Now, we don't have the ability to put this Emrakul in this turn, so we need to wait a turn. So if they bounce this, that's annoying. But if they bounce it, they need to play a Brazen Borrow, which means they need to play another island. or Well, I guess they can play a Wasteland. But most likely, it's going to be another island, which gives us the Carpet Flowers mana to replay this sneak attack. All right, Tamiyo's jumping in for an attack. The Brainstorm to flip the Tamiyo. We've seen this play pattern quite a few times today. We've seen this more than Psychic Frog, actually, today. And it's certainly up there with some of the best things you can be doing in Legacy right now. Because now we have four turns before our opponent wins the game. Now we're going to smash all their permanents down in a sec. There's a Wasteland. They're going to take out our red source. But we have this Carpet of Flowers. Which is not nothing. And red mana. I'm going to put in this attractor because this finds a red source and we win the game. Uh, there's a basic mountain. I'll take that. I'll take a Force of Will and a Show and Tell. Those are nice things to have. Take a One Ring, Sneak Attack, just a bunch of stuff. Let's mount it out. Put in Big Emma. This is exactly lethal. No, it's more than exactly lethal because our prince taken some damage. Okay, that seemed all right. Let's try and do that again, shall we? Don't really like this on the draw. I would 100% of the time want to be playing the tempo match, the tempo side of this matchup. I'm obviously a lot more comfortable playing that sort of deck than I'm playing sneaky shows, you can probably tell. Um, fixing ball so our stuff doesn't get countered. Enough lands to play around wastelands so we can get our sneak attack in. We will need to find a monster. We've been in this situation before and not found monsters, but I still think it's right to keep a hand that looks like this. It's a bit slow, but it has a way of securing the thing that we really need to do. We don't need to play Vex and Borblat on one. We can wait until two so we can play around the days, especially if our opponent's not playing any pressure on turn one. All right, I'm going to play out this Thundering Falls and just get a little bit of selection going. A Force of Will, is that really what I want now? I don't think it is. We're looking for monsters. We need to stick to the plan. If our plan involves Vex and Borble, it probably means we don't want to be playing the Force of Will. We also don't want to play out the Vexing Bauble early because we want to make sure that we give ourselves a chance to draw a Lotus Pearls. All right. If they take this out and don't play a threat, that's great. If they do play a threat, that's obviously not so good. All right. They've got a two power guy. That's okay. I'm just going to play out a Trop here and pass. Next turn, we play out the Vexing Bauble. Obviously, we play the Lotus Petal first. We go Petal, Bauble. And next turn, we can think about doing some sneak attack stuff. Right, getting hit for two by the Nethergoyf. Right, that's a bit of a disaster for us because that means our opponent's going to be getting loads of extra draws to look at some permission. And we still don't have a plan yet. I think we want to have a load of red sources out, so we're going to play out this Volk. And then we're going to try this Vexing Bauble out. We've got a Force of Will. So it kind of did its job. They brought in a Harmony of the Seas. That's really Could have had dueling Maguses. I think the Magus is better against our opponent's build of the deck than it is against... Um, like the Rescaminator style decks, because the Rescaminator also gets to play some basics to chew up with a lot more often. Now, our opponent's deck must have basics in there somewhere. They just haven't been tutoring them up. So maybe we could have tried to get them with a Magus, but then what are we taking out, right? Our deck's list is incredibly tight. They did not shuffle. Right, they're going to have a City Sewers to get rid of one of the cards they didn't want from the Ponder. No, they left on top while they're all that good. Yikes. Okay, deck. Carpet of Flowers. This might be something our opponent fights over. Let's go second main phase. Get some red mana. Let me play this fetch hand out. There's a force of will. Okay. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine mana. So one mana away from hard casting an omniscience. That's pretty wild. If our opponent plays a land, then we are we're able to cast on this. The issue here is. Our opponent has an awful lot of damage. Yep, they're flipping the Tamiyo, so this turn they minus it. Sorry, they plus it. The next turn they minus it, get the force back, and we're just cooked. It just feels like a better version of Jace Friend's Prodigy a lot of the time. Like, it's either a better version of Jace Friend's Prodigy, or it's you win the game on turn five. This Tamiyo card is pretty good. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And this costs ten. So our opponent gets to get their force of will back we just gotta hope they don't have a blue card for it because we are dead to the frog next turn yep there's the force of will how are we supposed to beat this right if they play a land and we draw a veil of summer okay they played a wasteland that's not the one we wanted to see. i don't think it's worth them wastelanding anything here we know they have force of will all right let's just 
I'm over and done with. So they cast a force of will. There's a surprise. They've got three, four, five, six damage if they want to go in. Maybe there's a world where they don't go in with the frog. Maybe they just want to hold up more. Well, the only reason they wouldn't go in is if they can hold up more disruption. Right, this is lethal anyway. Yep, an absolutely horrific matchup in my opinion. And let's talk about this deck because we had a miserable time. We went one and four. The only one we won was when we get paired against Eldrazi where the matchup is so good that our opponent was like, I don't want any part of this. And they were gone. And I don't think the matchup is that bad that you need to just say no. But yeah, we had a pretty rough time. We had a lot of one twos, but not a good day out. So why do I think we had a bad time with this deck? Well, I think we are an A plus B combo deck. But we're also making it so our mana base is a lot more susceptible to being hated on. So we need to get A plus B in a meta which is defined right now by blue-black tempo -y shells with a bunch of permission and like threats that put you under the gun that also have wasteland. So we're trying to assemble A plus B of like three or four mana spells whilst our opponent is attacking our mana base and countering our spells with soft permission like days, which is going to work more because they get to attack our stuff. It just feels like a really horrible spot to be playing this deck in my opinion. Now, let it be known, I am not a show and tell sneak attack sort of player or fan of the deck is not something that i've played very often so there's definitely people who are playing this deck more that are going to do a much better job than i am but i think just in terms of where the deck is positioned in the meta right now having a matchup like a that you just crunch through really easily is nice being able to kill all these cradle control decks and stuff like that is pretty reasonable too but when it comes to these decks with a bunch of wastelands and then you know blue black permission i don't know how you're supposed to reliably beat that matchup like we're getting one out of three games against them and that's just not enough when that's the main thing that people are doing with Psychic Frogs. And I'm not really convinced by the Veil of Summer. Now, I understand what the Veil of Summer is doing here. But we could have a mana base that is less susceptible to Wasteland and just run more Vexing Baubles. And that would be a better idea, in my opinion. Because we didn't really have the Veil of Summer up very often because our mana was under duress so often that we couldn't really leverage this really powerful card. So we were just... Okay, uh, we wait for another turn. Oh, no, we've waited for another turn. We're now getting hit by Wasteland. Because our mana base has to be worse to play the Veil of Summit. It kind of feels like you're getting hit by your opponent one way or the other, right? You either wait to play into this, uh, to play into, uh, into their counter magic with this, which might not be good enough because your opponent's going to stop you being able to play your main spells and you're trying to resolve a four mana spell, ideally with one red up and also casting Veil of Summit. It just feels like a big ask. Whereas if you just had the baubles, you'd have more mana on your go turn to actually play the things. And that seems like a stronger approach, in my opinion. Now, maybe that means that Force of Wills are bad here. But these are kind of just like other versions of Vexing Bauble, right? Like you're going to have one or the other. You're not necessarily going to have both. Now, we didn't have the greatest of draws. And maybe we could have mulliganed some of those hands. But every hand I kept, there were, there were reasons why I kept it, right? I was like, okay, we're really cold to Wasteland. We need to keep some land so we can actually resolve our spells. Okay, we don't get to resolve any of our spells because our opponent's got counter magic. And it just feels like the Wasteland counter magic decks are just going to be beating you up all the time. So I would rather play a straight red-blue build and get rid of these Veil of Summers and then change this mana base so that we have a lot more basics in our deck that we can go and fetch. So we're less likely to have hands. So we can get rid of this Besage as well. So we can probably get rid of at least three of these Wastelandable lands into you know another mountain and a couple of islands and then all of a sudden our mana base isn't as susceptible to all the things that our opponents are doing and we're more likely to be able to curve out into our things and play around dazes and such trying to cast this one ring felt difficult as well for the same reasons we just had a horrible time with our mana today and i'm not wholly convinced that this is where i would want to be i think there are better combo decks right now if you want to be doing this sort of thing like if you want to play the red black reanimator deck now it is susceptible to graveyard hate whereas this deck isn't but that deck has a lot of ways of looking at your opponent's hand checking the coast is clear it's very reliable and it's faster and it's not susceptible to wasteland so it has different weaknesses because the graveyard stuff you have to work out what you're doing from your sideboard but i think i would much rather you're playing a reanimator deck than something like this in a format where your opponent can just go no to some of your big spells and just hit your lands to make it harder to cast your big spells it just feels 
really awkward. Now, if you want to just dunk on Eldrazi, I would imagine this deck is very good at doing that. It always used to be back in the day. Like I said, we used to run the Confusion in the ranks, which is an enchantment where whenever a creature enters the battlefield, it gets put into play under a random opponent's control. So what would happen is you would show and tell it in and then you would get the big things they did. And you would sometimes run four of those in the sideboard back in the day because the matchup was so horrible you needed some way of cheesing it. So, yeah. Not convinced that just being really good against the non-blue decks is where I want to be when it feels like all the blue decks are going to be pretty good against us. Now, we probably get to sculpt quite nicely against the slower blue decks. You know, your blue-white control, maybe some of your bug beans, but bug beans still have frog and tamio as pressure sometimes. So it's going to be awkward to try and work this deck through what I believe the current metal looks like. That being said, putting an Emrakul into play on turn one or whatever, or, you know, in Traxa, these are powerful things to do. So sometimes you can just grind your way through a tournament purely by the fact that you're doing powerful things. I like doing powerful things in the format. You know, I play a lot of Turbo Depths because your plan is to make a creature that needs to be answered or it wins the game immediately. And this is kind of doing a very similar thing in some respects. So I can definitely appreciate that. Obviously, this has too many fail points for a deck that I would like to play. But it's nice to see people winning with it because it has been like a big staple of Legacy for so long. I just don't think this is a great choice right now. But fair play to uh, Death From Above who managed to win a challenge with it. Which makes the win even more impressive in my opinion because I think the format is quite hostile towards this. Although we did see this last week or so Eldrazi really having a breakout a couple of weeks. They won one of the challenges and they came. I think they came second, third, fourth and fifth in another challenge. So it's definitely a good week for Eldrazi. So this might have just been a really nice meta pick into what was going to be Eldrazi Geddon and just smash into all those decks. So... A good choice for the right time, perhaps, but I'm not convinced this is where I would want to be moving forward in the meta. All right, I hope you enjoyed this one. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything and it really does help the channel out. We are heading towards 4,000 subscribers, which is wonderful. And then we can start pushing for the big 5K after that. And that'll be wonderful to see so many people enjoying dedicated legacy action. All right, thank you so much for watching and goodbye. If you'd like to support me in the channel, please check out my Patreon. It has a free guide to budget turbo depths as well as three tiers of support. A low cost one that enters you into my monthly raffle for a free donation deck on the channel. A mid tier subscription that gives you access to my detailed turbo depths guide that is updated every month as well as regular articles. And lastly, the higher tier gives you all of the above as well as a monthly donation deck for my channel. If you're interested in supporting the channel this way, please check out the link in the description.